Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another episode of New Music Finds. So this is where I like to collect together all the different albums and things that I've purchased over the past week and present it to you. And I get them from different places like my local record store, but also online retail like Amazon, eBay, and more. I've got 15 items to run through with you, five CDs, 10 records. Uh, stick around for that. But before we get started, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus by subscribing, you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music, just like this with another episode of New Music Finds. So as we always do, we start off with new releases. And even though things have dwindled down, there was a few cool things that were coming out and uh, it got backed up a bit. So I didn't get them on release day. I got them a little bit later. And one of the first ones I wanna show you guys here is the Vinnie Moore Double Exposure album that just came out. This is a couple weeks old, but like I said, I just got it. And uh, if you don't know Vinnie Moore, great, amazing guitar player, shred fest kind of guy, at least back in the day, and then ultimately would go on to join UFO. And he's been with UFO now, I think for about 20 years. And this album here is really cool because the first half of it, it's 12 tracks. So first half of this thing is uh, got vocals on it and second half is instrumental. And so if you are into the sound that he does with UFO presently, which is not quite the shred fest style stuff that he used to do back in the late 80s and early 90s uh, with like Meltdown and stuff like that, uh, it, this is really good. But then those instrumental tracks that are on here, do get him close to returning to that shred fest style so i was pleasantly surprised by this this was really good i hope he makes more solo albums in this vein going forward but very good caught me off guard i would highly recommend it Vinny more double exposure and so then for um actually not this past week but the week before um or I take that back no i guess it was this past friday uh, the 16th but as i said i wasn't getting these things early now uh one of them in particular first one um came late for me just actually got it and i've been really enjoying it simply called ripper but this is tim ripper owens former judas priest vocalist who's sings with everybody now um and of course currently with kk's priest so that's cool you got kk downing Tim Ripper Owens back together in a version of Priest, or at least doing Priest style music is really how I look at it more than anything. But this is an EP and it's got six tracks on it. It's produced by Jamie Jastin. I believe he's of hate breed. So I know he brought a lot of cachet to it because of that. Didn't know what to expect with it because he's worked with D. Snyder of Twisted Sister and I have not enjoyed those albums. But this one here, all six of these are like classic metal out of the 80s. It's very, very cool. Um, in fact, from tracks two through six to the end, they are just outstanding. Embattled was, I think, the first single released on here. It's track number two. I'd recommend checking that out. But if you like any of the stuff that Tim Ripper Owens has been part of, I highly recommend this. This is very good. Just wish it was a full length album instead of only a six track EP. Now this next one here, which uh, did come out Friday, but I actually got it a little earlier because I ordered a UK edition where I think it had come out a couple weeks earlier, but that's because there's different track listing on it and I'll talk about it in just a second. So Kansas, uh, another fork in the road, 50 year anniversary it's celebrating and it's uh, three discs, three CDs, tons and tons of tracks. Don't know how many there's 13 on the first one, 15 on the second, and 13 on the last one. So you do the math and add all of that up. I think that's uh, you know near 62 tracks, give or take. Um, but, or uh, 52 tracks maybe. Um, but this thing that's cool is that, like I said, that second disc that's in here is different than the US edition. So in the US, uh, Steve Morse was part of the band and they were on MCA records at that time. And so none of that material appears, none of the, nothing from those two albums appears on the US edition of this. In the UK, I think they were all on the same label, so there weren't any issues like that. They can actually include that. There's five tracks from that alone on here. But then there's some other selections and differences as well on this, making this have more than just what you might initially think, which is there's 15 tracks on this one, but on the US one, there's 17, or uh, there's 13. 
shows two less, but it's not just two more tracks because they actually had to shuffle things around to get the five songs from those two Steve Morse albums on here. So I thought that was pretty cool. I'm a big fan of Steve Morse and I also am a completist. So this you know, sold itself as something from every album. And I don't know if they were able, if they were still trying to push that in terms of the US version or not, but that's the hype sticker that came on this. And then true to their word, they have something from every album on here. And it's not always what you would expect. It's not always the big hit. So they do have songs like Dust in the Wind and uh, Carry On Wayward Son, but those are done as um, either acoustic versions or the orchestrated versions, but different later on. They're not the same studio ones. That might detour some people on here. But I like that they did that and they pulled something else from the Point of No Return album and um, so forth so that uh, you, you're not always getting just what you would expect. And it's a little bit of variety in here. And so for a fan like me and someone that has been enjoying this band for a very long time, some of you out there enjoying it for 50 years, it makes for something a little nicer to get that as opposed to just the stray stuff. You know, they do have the classic greatest hits packages out there. You can pick those up and get those hits and so forth. And this here ha just happens to have something from every uh, official release. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, I got that one from the UK in order to get that uh, alternate second disc that's in there. Then I got a couple things from eBay. Uh, first one up, Canadian band called Fist. Just seeing their albums around, had not seen this one here and it caught my eye and really liked it. Now I knew of the new wave of British heavy metal band called Fist and kind of always thought, oh, there's another band out there called Fist, that's kind of silly. Why did they take the same name, so forth kind of thing. And I never gave it much thought, but I decided to finally check it out. And man, I should have been listening to these guys a lot longer because this stuff is really good. The name of this album is In The Red and uh, really, as I said, I can't, don't know much else about it. It was the album cover that spoke to me, that made me pick it up, and the fact that it's a reissue on Bad Reputation Records, which has been churning out some really cool reissues from the 80s. So I said, you know, why not? Let's pick that up. Let's give it a shot. And I've really, really enjoyed that. So that was just a good, not only a good score, but just after getting it and thinking, well, I'm going to enjoy it, it turned out to be even better than I had expected. And then in my eternal quest to actually pick up all of the James Gang albums, not as two furs and things like that, but actual individual uh, releases, I picked up Straight Shooter. First album they recorded after Joe Walsh left the group. And they went on and recorded, I think, a total of six more albums after Joe Walsh had left the band. And um, I definitely have enjoyed that era of music as well. They had different guitar players, most notable having had um, uh, Tommy Bolin in the lineup before he went on to Deep Purple. So, you know, they've always had some cachet from that, having had Joe Walsh, Tommy Bolin, and so forth. But the people that played in the rest of these lineups, uh, very good stuff. This was a One Way Records uh, reissue of it on CD. But as I said, being able to get this um, uh, release as a standalone and not one of those two for things um, I like. I've also got the Miami album, I've got Bang. I'm working on getting uh, the rest of them individually if they're available. All right, and then I've got uh, 10 records that I picked up and we'll start with uh, head pins. So Brian Too Loud McLeod comes from Chilliwack, decides to form this group. I think he did it with the bass player from the same band and um, Al Bryant, those two guys coming from Chilliwack. And, but you got Darby Mills and um, man, not only is she an attractive woman, but man, can she sing like mad. Uh, just really crazy. If you've never listened to her vocals, uh, she's uh, really, really good. So this being their third album, I think, Head Over Heels, didn't know much about it, had uh, the second album, need to get the debut, and saw that and just said, hey, got to pick that up. Then I found this, didn't know anything about this one, Ronin, but found out that um, Wadi Wachow. Now, somebody else had told me I should pronounce that as Wadi Wachtel, but to me, C-H is ch, not ka, so I'm going with Wachow. Um, and uh, the rest of the guys, I don't recognize their names offhand, but 
Um, I always liked him. He plays with Stevie Nicks a lot, but he's also done session work and other things, and he's just a who's who that has played with everyone. And I see that name all the time. So when I saw this um, record here I, and, and saw his name on it, I said, I've got to pick it up. This next one was cool. Uh, Dead Ringer, Electrocution of the Heart. Um, didn't know much about this either, except that I opened it up and I found that it had two guys from the Alice Cooper band, Neil Smith, Dennis Dunaway, drummer, bassist. You've got uh, Charlie Hun on vocals from Ted Nugent's band, uh, done other things. Um, you also have uh, one of the Bouchard brothers from Blue Oyster Cult in here. So very cool kind of super group thing, only made the one album, but that was just, I was like, wow, look at that lineup, have to get that. And then uh, this one didn't know anything about, but I uh, just saw the cover, opened it up, female fronted uh, vocal, you know, well, of course it's female fronted vocalist, uh, female fronted band. And uh, on the SPV label, uh, German label, it turned out to be a little bit heavier than I thought it was gonna be. It wasn't just straight ahead rock kind of a thing. And I think it might be an EP, not a full length album because it's just six tracks, but Blitz is the name of the group. Do the Blitz is the album and uh, definitely worth exploring. Glad I picked that up. The Cross, Shove It, which has um, Roger Taylor from Queen on vocals, uh, writing all the tracks as well in here. So if you're a fan of any of the work that he wrote for Queen, you can definitely get some of that through The Cross. Of course, it's solo albums and other things. And The Cross did three records. I actually have Mad, Bad, and Dangerous to Know, which I think is their best album. And then after that, they did Blue Rock. And I've, I've got this one ordered on CD. Looking forward to getting that one. Have not come across Blue Cross, at least at a reasonable price yet, but keeping an eye out for that. Was on a Big Eagles kick, so I had to get this. Glenn Fry, No Fun Allowed, the only Glenn Fry album I didn't have. Still have never seen a copy on CD in the wild. Yes, I know I can go on eBay or Discogs or whatever and order one up for a little too much money that I don't want to spend. I kind of like finding them when they are good price and their steals at that. If you have to shell out a ridiculous amount of money, it's just not worth it unless the album like blows my mind. And then sometimes I'm willing to shell out the big bucks. But yeah, you know, when you can get this for two bucks the way I did, uh, it makes it much more worthwhile to get it on vinyl and enjoy it that way. And then when I find the uh, CD in the wild, uh, I'll pick it up. And you know, what I find a lot of times is as soon as I get the record, I find the CD. So I always kind of use that uh, a little bit as a gauge, like, all right, let's go ahead and get the vinyl. Maybe I'll find the CD next week. Ringo the Fourth. I um, assume this is his fourth album. Didn't actually look it up to see, but a um, uh, solo album, but maybe not. Um, I found that, um, or this was reissued as part of Record Store Day, so that's why it was like in my mind. And then I decided to look it up and found out that it was much more of the disco era in terms of its sound. And I thought that was pretty cool. I wanted to hear what Ringo would sound like doing disco era style songs and whatnot. Um, and I think this was uh, 1977, but I found an original Atlantic Records copy of it and not the Friday Music reissue for Record Store Day. Even though Friday Music does a good job with that stuff, I still always prefer the original label. So that's why I picked up a used one there. Um, the Hollies reunion album, What Goes Around? Um, didn't know much about this one either. Uh, I'm a fan of Graham Nash, so you know, when, wherever I see him, and I love 80s albums, so I decided to pick it up for that. This one was so good, I went ahead and ordered it on CD as well. Didn't have to pay too much for it. Uh, took a little bit of hunting, and then I actually found a new copy of it in print, uh, able to get kind of a thing without having to go crazy for it. But when I just did my initial search for it, it wasn't coming up, so it's kind of weird sometimes how those things run under the wire and you have to kind of do a little extra search for it. Adrian Gervitz, um, known for playing with the Baker Gervitz Army and before that in a band called Gun. He also played in a group called Three Man Army and a number of different things, but I've always been a fan of his. Uh, did the song Race with the Devil uh, with the band Gun. So you might know that song. That's probably his biggest claim to fame kind of a thing. Had a hit with that. Sweet Vendetta's name of the album itself, solo album. Uh, definitely much more of the 80s and pop sounding than any of his amazing guitar works that he did back, back with Baker Gervitz Army or the other projects and stuff like that. So a little let down by it, but it's Adrian Gervitz and I love having it in the collection. And again, for two bucks, what are you gonna do? And then this one, 
Dan McCafferty, um, you know, uh, Nazareth Singer, solo album, debut it looks like, because it's self-titled, and uh, 1970, I can see that real quick, 78, if I'm reading that correctly. Um, yeah, uh, this, this is cool. So I found this out after picking it up. It's got uh, Zal Clemenson on guitars in here from the Sensational Alex Harvey Band. So that was cool. And I love getting these records and then reading and finding out who a guitar player or somebody is on it and going, wow, you know, what would Nazareth have been like, you know, with that, uh, you know, person or what would a band have been like with that person or so forth. And when you can put two of them together under something like that. So for me, this, this is a fun time of year to go ahead and be finding, you know, solo albums and things like that. And, you know, whether this has ever been issued to CD, I don't know, but I know I've never seen it and it's very hard to come by in that regard. Same thing with the Adrian Gervitz. So it's like finding those things on vinyl and fleshing stuff out and then going on eBay and pulling stuff that you know isn't necessarily new and whatnot is a fun time of year for me and I'm getting some good finds for it. Hopefully you guys are finding some good things and finding some other ways to flesh out your uh, interest of music while new releases aren't flowing as fluidly as they have uh, throughout the rest of the year. But we'll be back at it soon because uh, January 6th, first Friday up in January after the new year, and we've already got Iggy Pop listed for that and a couple other things. Uh, Fastway has a singles A and B sides collection coming out, which is pretty cool. Hopefully more will get added to it, but we'll dive back into that. You'll start seeing many more new releases and things in my uh, new music finds every week when we get back into that. But until then, we're gonna be doing some of this. So. All right, everyone, have a good one. Take care. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, don't forget to subscribe, and uh, I'll talk to you all real soon. Bye-bye, guys.